This conference will now be recorded. Uh, good morning, others. So here, I think so. We discussed the up to how to. <coughs> In our previous class, we had the following discussion. We had discussion about this uh, the Hadoop architecture. In terms of this Hadoop architecture, we discussed about uh, what is HDFS, then uh, how it will be the block size, how to perform a uh, read and write of this uh, data from HDFS blocks. Also, we discussed something about this uh, MapReduce programming, then the basics associated with MapReduce uh, with a small scenario, what we need to do with the map function and what we need to do with the reduce function. Okay. So we, we will be having an in-depth discussion while going up with this and map reduce. So here, <clears throat> do you have any clarification that, that need to be done before going to today's session? The agenda for today's session. So we are a discussion on the functions of name node. We are discussions on functions of secondary name nodes, the functions of job tracker, and the functions of data nodes, and the functions of task tracker. All the associated functions of a Hadoop demand has been discussed in our previous session. Today, we can start with our, the installation part of a Hadoop cluster. So with respect to this installation part, what we can do? We can go up with this installation either by using uh, yeah, AWS <coughs> cloud-based installation. For that, we may be using Amazon Cloud. AWS stands for Amazon Web Services, or make use of uh, virtualization software. In this sense, we can make use of the following software, either uh, VMR Workstation, or we can make use of uh, uh, Virtual Box by Oracle. Okay, so here uh, I will let you know the download link in the associated key for VMR Workstation 11 or VMR Workstation 12 or you can do this thing using the toolbox. Okay, so I need one clarification from your side. Guys, if you are aware of this AWS cloud, also because, so it will be more easy. So if you go for this virtualization based installation of your <coughs> Hadoop establishment of Hadoop cluster, all you need is, so with respect to a single node cluster that we are going to configure, we need minimum the following setup yeah, i3 with 4 GB of RAM. Okay, this is uh, your minimum setup. If you want to go up with a multi node cluster, okay, which is a protection based uh, scenario, we need to have minimum yeah, i5 with 8 GB of RAM. So, guys, uh, please kindly uh, assume that uh, you uh, assume that you all uh, have a, a configuration uh, nearing to i5 or i7 with a minimum of 8 GB RAM, is it? If else, uh, if you have a less configurations, uh, you kindly let me know. I will uh, let you know how to launch a single node cluster and how to arrange an either on top of it. So those guys are having a less capacity systems with you for your hands on, can work with the getting the resources from cloud. So before going into this cloud, I need to have a confirmation with you. A guys should be aware of cloud. Arun, Pavan, Sanjay, Vijay. If you are aware of cloud, I can skip the <coughs> discussion on cloud. I can right away uh, without going up with this uh, basics. I can right away go to how to launch an uh, instance in a cloud and how to configure other one top of it. I need a small this clarification. Also, this is Sanjay. Uh, yes, Sanjay. Yeah, uh, I know uh, about the cloud, but I'm not sure about the rest of us. Arun, Pavan. Uh, yeah, I, I have some idea. You have idea? I have some idea. I have some idea about that. Okay, you know, you, you already aware of uh, this AWS. Yeah. Yeah, no. Vijay? I'm also aware of a little bit uh, on cloud uh, okay. run. Uh, and then, if that's the case, we can try to remove it. Let me first start with our description now. The various installation perspective. So, various types of uh, installation, what is single node and what is multi node. And then uh, we will uh, start uh, the discussion of uh, single node installation. What are all the 
files uh, that we need to work with, what the sequence of procedures that we need to follow with. So by uh, probably by end of today, we may complete the single node installation, which you can practice here. So you are aware of this virtualization, all right? The concept behind virtualization, how to create virtual machines? Yes, sir. This is Sanjay. Yes. Yes. Arun Pawan Vijay, for you, if you are aware of how to create a VM using a <coughs> virtualization software like VMR or virtual box, I can send away and discuss uh, how to do that. Yes, I need to go with the basic concept of virtualization uh, for 15 20 minutes. Uh, I don't have that much knowledge on this one. Uh, sorry. Pawan? Yeah. Uh, not that much idea. Okay, then uh, if that's the case, uh, we can work with uh, 10 to 15, 20 minutes of our uh, fundamentals uh, discussion on <coughs> virtualization, concept began virtualization. Also, because this is the concept that we are adapting in cloud also. Okay. So. <coughs> For setting up this uh, Hadoop cluster, we go uh, with this uh, virtualization. What is virtualization? So virtualization <coughs> is an abstraction layer that decouples the physical hardware from the operating system to deliver greater IT repositorization and flexibility. <coughs> it allows multiple virtual machines with different operating systems to run in isolation side by side on the same physical machine. Each virtual machine has its own set of virtual hardware. Okay, each machine will have its RAM, CPU, network interface card associated with it by one. On top of it, we can have operating system and applications. Virtual machine, what is virtual machine? Which is nothing but a representation of a physical machine by software. Okay, which uh, will uh, have its own set of uh, virtual hardware that it appears from the underlying physical server upon which you can install the operating system and needed application software. If these two uh, slides is making any sense now, if not, if not, uh, you will uh, let you know that you will uh, let the answer for each and every word that I have been represented here within the discussion of that 15 20 minutes. Virtualization is the abstraction layer that decouples the physical hardware from operating system. Okay, so if you take into consideration uh, a real physical machine, okay, the physical machine, we have our hardware component, we have our hardware component, and on top of it, uh, we'll be having our operating system, and on top of it, uh, we will be having our uh, application software. Okay, with respect to hardware, we have our uh, CPU, we have our RAM memory, we have our hard disk, we have our interface, network interface called like. Okay, each and everything is closely binded with each other in our physical machine. Okay, in our computer, physical computer. All the above set traces is closely binded with each other. The failure in any one of the components. Example, if there is a CPU failure, what happens? Even though RAM, hard disk, or network are found to be working fine, operating system and application software is working fine. Can you be able to access your data? No. If a CPU fails or a RAM fails, any other component fails, the entire system will fail. The hardware is working fine. The operating system is corrupted. You couldn't do anything. Your hardware and operating system is working fine. Your application software is corrupted. You couldn't do any access. So the thing is that here, uh, it is a failure of any one of the associated components may result in a single point of failure. That is, the entire uh, system will be get crashed. That is the problem associated with our physical computer. If you consider the same sort of thing in your virtualized machine, then you have your virtual hardware and you have your operating system on top of it. Okay, and you have your application software. 
So all these things, the application software, you may be a web server, or it may be a database server, or it may be a mail server, or it may be a DNS server, any application that may run on top of you. Operating system may be a Windows operating system, or it may be a Linux-based operating system. Here, the, as of the, it may be CPU, RAM memory, hard disk, etc. All the associated hardware. Okay? Each and every, in your virtualization, in your virtual machine, all the components is not a, a, a directly uh, dependent upon other components. Okay, if failure in any one of the components doesn't work, results in the entire crash as that of your physical component. Each and every component is a separator from other component. It is not direct. So failure in one, any one of the components won't result in a total failure. If a CPU fails, I no need to worry about it. I can replace with a new CPU immediately. So if uh, my operating system got corrupted, I, I can run my application by migrating into my application into any other virtual machine. So you might, as in my have own virtual machine, virtual machine 2 or virtual machine 1. Okay, if my application, uh, my operating system get corrupted, as of my physical computer, there is no single point of failure. So what I can do, I can replace this operating system or I can move my application to another virtual machine which runs the same operating system within a fraction of a second. Therefore, at any point of time, a failure in any one of the components won't result in a total failure. Okay, I can replace the failed component with the another component within a fraction of a second. So by the way, I can able to ensure the high availability of all the component and of all the services that is running on top of it. I can ensure the high availability. Yes. So, so that is the first major advantage of going for this uh, virtual machine compared to that of physical machine. That is what the point number one is to say. It is an abstraction. Right? Okay, it doesn't uh, make a uh, sense to the end user. Uh, okay, whether the user is uh, using a virtual machine or a physical machine. Okay, then decouples the, that is called abstraction. It decouples the physical hardware from operating system to deliver greater resource utilization and flexibility. Here, as I told, here each and every component is decoupled. It's not coupled with one another. It's not dependent upon one another. So all these components being they are independent components and failure is one of the components won't affect the uh, total system. Instead of that, we can replace the failed component. Okay, that is the first point. The second point of our discussion the allows multiple virtual machines with uh, different operating systems to run in isolation side by side on the same physical machine. Here, each and every machine will have its own hardware. Let me discuss this part. Okay, where I can launch uh, the virtual machine? I can launch a virtual machine, n number of virtual machines on top of a physical server. Assume that I have a physical server. I have a server. A physical machine, that's all. It is no need to be a server. Imagine I have a i7 machine with 8 cores and uh, I have 8 GB of RAM memory and 1 TB of hard disk. And my physical machine is a Windows 10 based machine, operating system. On top of the physical machine, what I can do? On top of it, I can install a virtualization software. Using this virtualization software, I can launch multiple machines. Okay, each and every machine, I can launch multiple machines using this virtualization software. So those are all virtual machine one, virtual machine two, virtual machine three. So I can assign uh, one microprocessor, one GB of RAM, and uh, 100 GB of hard disk. I can install uh, Windows uh, XP on top of it. I can assign, once again here, uh, two microprocessors, two GB of RAM memory, and 200 GB of hard disk. And I can install a Red Hat operating system and I can make it as a database server. 
So I can install here three microprocessor, four GB of RAM memory, and hundred GB of storage. I can install a Ubuntu operating system. I can make it as a Hadoop single node. So each and every virtual machine, virtual machine one, virtual machine two, or virtual machine three, will have its own set of virtual hardware. That is your CPU, your RAM memory, and hard disk. So you can create your first question: How many? virtual machines that you can create okay so you can create uh, n number of virtual machines then n depends upon the virtualization software that we are using with respect to virtualization software we have a uh, yeah, vmr vmr workstation okay so this is a client software we have a vsphere server vmr vsphere server Similarly, with respect to Microsoft, we have a software called Hyperlink View, which is a Microsoft. With respect to Oracle, we have Virtual Box. Okay, these are all. Then we have a Citrix. These are all some of the software using which uh, you can create your virtual machines. We are going to follow a VMR workstation using which we can create the virtual machines. Okay, so based upon the virtual machine software and based upon its version. Uh, here, n number of VMs can be created. There is no restriction. But the thing is that how many virtual machines you can run concurrently? You can run concurrently. Here, it depends upon the underlying physical hardware that is available to be assigned to the virtual machine. Let me take this. The i7 is assumed to be containing 8 microprocessor, 8 core processor. We have 8 GB of RAM and we have 1000 GB of storage. So, all the things that we have assigned to the machine, microprocessor, RAM memory, and hard disk, need to be acquired from the underlying physical server. All the virtual machines uh, hardware need to be assigned from the underlying physical machine. I can uh, assign, uh, I can create a n number of virtual machines. That doesn't match for me. I can create another virtual machine. Okay, virtual machine 4. And I can assign 4 microprocessors. I can even assign 4 GB of RAM memory. Okay, and 200 GB of hard disk. That doesn't matter. It permits me to create a multiple virtual machine. But the thing is that if you want to run all those virtual machines in a concurrent manner, so the thing is that for your physical machine, which uh, runs the operating system and the virtualization software, it is recommended to have a minimum of two microprocessor and two GB of RAM for your virtualization software like VMR workstation, which is the minimum recommended. You need to assign two microprocessor and two GB of RAM for running the operating system along with all the services on the physical machine. Okay, you have left out with remaining, after the two, you have left out with remaining six microprocessors and six GB of RAM memory. Okay, so this six microprocessor and six GB of RAM memory alone can be consumed by the running virtual machines. If that is the case, so in this, you can I able to run all the machines, virtual machine one, virtual machine two, Virtual Machine 3, Virtual Machine 4 concurrently. So the answer is for VM1, I need one microprocessor. VM2, two microprocessor. VM3, three microprocessor. VM4, four microprocessor. If I try to run all the machines, the total number of microprocessor that I may need, 1 plus 2, 3, 3 plus 3, 6, 10 microprocessor I may need. Similarly, with respect to RAM memory, 1 GB RAM, 2 GB RAM, here 4 GB RAM and here to 4 GB of RAM. Okay. So here for my virtual machine 4, 4 GB, here to 4 GB. Total by requirement is I need a 11 GB of RAM. Whereas how much of resources that it is available with me? So I am available with 6 microprocessor and 6 GB of RAM. Therefore, running all the four is not possible here. Now I can run uh, VM1, VM2, and VM3. Is it possible? 
once again the number of processor i need is uh, 1 plus 2 3 6 processor i am having but with respect to ram memory i need 7 gb of ram whereas my availability is 6 gb therefore that too is not possible because of uh, lagging of ram that it is assigned to my machine it is not possible if that is the case what i need to do I want to get 1 GB of RAM from my physical server so that I left out with 4 GB of RAM which I, I can make use of it to run 3 machines VM1, VM2 and VM3 in a concurrent manner. So the thing is that if you want to run a virtual machine, okay, all the associated hardware that is associated with your virtual machine should be the hardware associated with your virtual machine should be less than or equal to the available resources. Available free resources. In this case, these are all available resources. Here, these are all my required resources. If I go up with all the four machines, which is not less than or equal to, therefore, this uh, situation is not possible. I, the thing that I need to make to uh, uh, convey here, understanding here is, so I can run n number of virtual machines provided if the needed hardware is available free if not then to which extent that the hardware is available that number of virtual machines can be i can run but i can create n number of machines there is no constraint in creating the number of machines i don't need to bother about the hardware that it is assigned to the machines that i am creating only it needs to be taken into consideration if I run the if a particular virtual machine. These are all the ways by which you can create a virtual machine using the virtualization software and you can work with the virtual machine as if as the physical machine. So a virtual machine will do all activity what a physical server will do. Okay? Each and every machine will have its own IP address. All the virtual machine will have its own IP. Let me imagine. It is 192 and 100.10.1. You have IP 192.100.10.2. You have IP 192.100.3. You have IP VM4 192.100.10.4. Okay. If a user, so this is a, a physical server, only one server. On top of it, uh, you have launched uh, this much of virtual machines, all these virtual machines, you launch on top of a physical server, which uh, acts as an in separate entity. You can start and you can stop all the virtual machines, start the virtual machine one. You can stop the virtual machine two. So without uh, affecting each and one another. Okay, each and every machine is independent of another. It is highly transparent to the end user. <coughs> Who is using that machine, whether it is a virtual machine or whether it is a physical machine that is highly transparent to the end user. So, this is the way by which you can launch the virtual machine and you can do all the activity on top of it. This is point number two and point number three. It allows multiple virtual machines with a different operating system to run isolation. In this example, we have VM1 containing a Windows, VM2 containing a Red Hat. VM3 containing Ubuntu, so VM4 contains CentOS, like you can have any any operating system that it is associated. Okay, here on top of the same physical machine, that is a key part. Each virtual machine has its own set of it. so we have a RAM, CPU, mix upon which operating system or applications are run. Here we have in this machine, okay, application, uh, Windows client is running here. Here, here we are having a database server application. Here we have a Hadoop single node cluster as my application. Right? Each machine can be treated as a software, a physical computer. You which you can install operating system, you can install applications, you can have yeah, separate access to those virtual machines without bothering about the another machine. So this is the way by which okay, the advantage here is if you want to have as a separate physical machine you need to go for the investment for all the four machines okay you need to purchase four machines and you need to configure all the things it's not that you can get a single physical machine on top of it using this virtualization software you can able to configure multiple physical machines
these are all the advantages of going for virtualization. With respect to this, if you have any doubt, please let me know before proceeding. Further. This conference will now be recorded. Just a recap. Here, based upon the number of uh, data nodes in the cluster, your cluster can be categorized into a small cluster, medium cluster, and enterprise cluster. A small cluster consists of uh, the number of data nodes in terms of uh, 10 and 20. A medium cluster consists of uh, number of data nodes uh, with respect to 100, 200, etc. And in enterprise cluster in terms of thousands. Okay, as uh, my knowledge, the world's largest cluster currently was built by Yahoo, which may contain 65,000 data nodes, followed with the Google 60,000 data nodes. It might have been increased uh, by now. This is my knowledge, based upon my knowledge uh, perspective, I deliver these uh, statistics. Okay, so if you take into consideration the hardware that we need to assign, yes, these are all the hardware that we need to assign for our master nodes and for our data nodes in our real time, in a real world. Okay, in an enterprise, uh, you have the following. A master node need to be with the minimum recommendation Intel Xeon microprocessor with 8 or 16 port and the RAM memory with the minimum of uh, 64 or uh, uh, max 128 GB. It is up to the size of the budget that will design the hardware. This is the minimum recommended. Okay, the hard disk, you need a less hard disk. Which is because you are not going to store anything apart from your operating system in your master. Whereas here the master needs to be equipped with more RAM memory. Which is because all the metadata information being it is placed in the RAM memory, you need a more RAM memory compared to that of your data node. This is the architecture associated with Hadoop. If it is a Spark, here in data node also you need to have more RAM memory. Which is because all intermediate data will be stored and intermediately in the RAM memory. So that's the reason in case of your data node, you need to have more RAM memory for your Apache Spark setup. Okay, so here the hard disk capacity here need to be little bit more in data nodes compared to that of your master nodes. Also because here only the data storage will take place. So data won't be stored under the master. All the data has been printed and it will be stored under the slave node. That's the reason why you need to have a more hard disk to capacity. Okay, yes. is it making sense now? The hardware associated. But here for our practice, uh, this much of hardware is not needed. You can make use of uh, i5 or i7 machine. That is sufficient enough for doing all the practice. Okay, how we can make a setup? Here, for our practice, what we can do, we can configure uh, the following thing. With respect to the other cluster, we can classify it into a single node cluster and a multi node cluster. The single node means you have only a single computer under which you configure name node, secondary name node, job tracker, data node, and task tracker. You need to configure all the demands on the same single node. Whereas in multi node, you can have a separate, separate demands. You can have a demand for name node and a job tracker together. Okay, as a, as a secondary name node. And you can have multiple data nodes, data node 1, data node 2, data node 3. On top of it, you can have task trackers. Okay? So here, whether to have a separate, separate servers for name node, job tracker, and secondary name node, or certain things can be clubbed based upon the cluster category. As we discussed before, we have a small, we have a large, we have a Sorry, we have a medium cluster, we have a large or enterprise cluster. If the number of uh, machines, data nodes are 10 and 20, you can have the following setup. You can configure your name node, 
the secondary name node and job tracker. Everything can be configured as a single machine. If the number of data nodes is in the hundreds and two hundreds, you can have a one server dedicated for name node and job tracker, another server dedicated for your secondary name node. All the remaining are your data nodes. If it is a thousands, you need to have no other way a separate computer for name node, separate computer for secondary name node, a separate computer for job tracker. Name node, secondary name node, and job tracker need to be run separately for your enterprise cluster. And for your medium cluster, you can configure, you can club your name node and job tracker on one server and secondary name node on another server. For a small cluster, Everything can be under the same. Okay, this is the way by which uh, uh, you can uh, follow the hardware. But it is not mandatory. If you have uh, 20 data nodes, all the name nodes, secondary name node and job tracker need to be configured on a single server. It is not mandatory. It is a best practice. To reduce the hardware cost, we can uh, follow the particular architecture. If your budget uh, having uh, enough, uh, okay, then you can uh, even for a 10 node cluster, you can have a separate separate server. It is up to the size uh, and up to the budget that you need to design going up with a separate server or clubbing all the things. So for our practice, we will be clubbing all the things, all the three servers on one node and the remaining uh, data node as a separate machine. Yes. Is it making sense? Do you have any question? Please, guys. No, sir. We, I'm fine, Ms. Sanjay. Arun, Avan? At any point of time, if you get stuck with uh, any concept, you please let me know. I will try to explain by giving some other example. Sure, sir. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. Hi Vijay, do you feel comfortable? Is it okay for you? Yes. Now for our setup, this is the machine that I currently have, I am having. I am going to make use of the following setup. I am currently having the i7, 16 GB of RAM memory and with 1 TB. This is my hardware. So I install VMR workstation. So on top of it, for a multi node, I am going to create a machine and I am going to create two data nodes. Data node 1, data node 2, on top of it, I have pass tracker 1, pass tracker 2. Here I am going to club a name node, a secondary name node, and the job tracker onto the master. This is my master machine. These are all my slave machines. So for the master, I am going to assign two microprocessor and uh, 4 GB of RAM memory and uh, I am going to add uh, 20 GB of storage, that is enough. For my data nodes, I am going to add 2 microprocessor and uh, 2 GB of RAM memory. Okay, 2 microprocessor and 2 GB of RAM memory. So remaining microprocessors, 2 microprocessor and 8 GB of RAM is going to be with is going to be with my physical server. Okay. This is the setup uh, that I am having, and this is the way by which I am going to proceed. Initially, I am going to launch a single node cluster for my single node. I am going to assign four microprocessor, four GB of RAM memory, and for my single node cluster. So for multi node, this is the setup. So if you have uh, your machines uh, with the following configuration, you can make use of it. Well, say anyone, uh, let me know what is your configuration. Sanjay, what is your configuration? I will give you a recommendation.
Yes, Sanjay. Uh, I need to, on. yeah, I need to check my configuration. Just give me a sec, sir. Yeah, yeah. So that, uh, what are all the things that uh, I am uh, practicing in my machine may not be feasible if you have a less hardware. So if you let me know your hardware configuration, I will give you a recommendation. It perfectly suits your uh, machine. Other Arun, Arun. Uh, Ram, mine is I five. I ten. I five. I five. I five. Eight GB RAM. Eight GB. So. Yep. Then uh, what you can do, Bhavan? If it is I five eight GB, okay, it may be around a four microprocessor. It may be a four core processor. I assume. With 4 core and 8 GB, what you can do, you, you create the following setup. Instead of going for this setup, you can go with the following setup. Okay? Okay, Raman. Uh, Raman, this. Yeah. Sanjay, yes, yeah. Sir. So mine's in. Yeah i7 16 gb ram and uh, i think it's 500 gb hard disk oh sure. so here that uh, i7 uh, 16 gb you can uh, follow the uh, scenario setup that i had uh, that uh, for power being it is i5 it may be 4 microprocessor uh, uh, 4 core 8 gb under this circumstances what you can do you can create a machine initial for its initial you can create a machine for single node, two microprocessor and four GB of RAM memory. This is for its single node. If it is a multi-node cluster, so here you need to assign two microprocessor and two GB of RAM memory. Remaining a left node with two microprocessor and a six GB of RAM memory. What you can do, you can create a master with one microprocessor and three GB of RAM uh, or uh, four GB of RAM. And he can create one data node, data node one with one microprocessor and two GB of RAM. Okay, so you can do the practice with the following setup. You create one microprocessor and four GB for your master, and one microprocessor with the remaining two GB for your data node. You can create a, a single node. You can make this a master. As the to act as a data node also, if one. Okay, this is the way by which you can do your practices. All others okay. you follow according to your configuration. Yes, this is clear. Now, it is not mandatory that you need to have a separate separate server. You can club all the associated demands into a single server. Or you can have it as a separate separate server. It depends upon what is the hardware that is currently available. Now we are going to discuss about the installation procedures. Okay, associated installation procedures. Uh, guys, I need to I need an answer for a question. Are you aware of Linux? A basic Linux. Yes, sir. How to create a file, how to set up. So, excluding uh, Sanjay, Arun, Pavan, Jay, what is the feedback? Yes, what is the, yeah, yeah. You, that's a uh, fundamental is the Linux is up in Linux form. If not, mm -hmm. uh, I will uh, take a session uh, to cover all the Linux. Okay? Assuming, are you aware? Arun? Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. So let me start our discussion on how to install a single node cluster. How to, what are the sequence of steps that you need to follow in installing a single node cluster. Okay. Install a single node cluster. So what are all the prerequisites? 
need to have one complete virtual machine. It may be a virtual machine, or it can be an instance from cloud, or it can be a physical machine. You can choose anything. Here, in terms of operating system, we are going to have a Linux as my operating system. Okay, I am going to use Ubuntu. 16.04 30s version. You can make use of either a Sun or a Red Hat. So I am going to make use of Ubuntu as my operating system. Next, what I need is I need to configure this SSKI server. I need to generate SSKI hyphen key generation. Okay, SSK server, SSK serpent key generation, and finally I need to configure Hadoop. So these are all the prerequisites with respect to my uh, operating system and the associated utilities I need to have the single node cluster configuration. Okay, so we can take a break for five ten minutes and be back to discuss the, what are all the things that I need to do. How I can create a virtual machine and how what are all the sequence of commands I need to go for for this installation. Okay, the time is 9 10, we back at 9 20. Thank you. This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so this is the setup that we need to go for. So, here for installing a single load cluster. So, let me create a VM. Okay. So at the time of uh, creating the VM, it prompts you for the operating system. So here, if it is a VM map, what do you need to do? So you need to specify the operating system. You should have a .iso image of your operating system, or you need to have a CD or DVD in of your operating system. So while uh, going for creating a VM, so you need to specify the location of ISO image or if you have a DVD of your operating system, you can choose this. It will start uh, installation of it. Okay, so here at the time of creating the VMM, you need to assign the number of CPU, the number of RAM memory, and number of hard disk and the associated hardware need to be assigned at the time of creating of the VM. Okay. So assume uh, the VM uh, and uh, you need to choose this uh, OS. Here the operating system that we are going to make use of it. Uh, Ubuntu, you can make either a 14.04 or 16.04. So this is with respect to the VMR workstation. If it is cloud, I will do the installation in AWS cloud also. In AWS cloud, what I am going to make use of it. So the installation is going to be done with Ubuntu 16.04. And in terms of uh, the, apart from that, what you need? You need to have uh, a Java JDK minimum recommended 1.7 or 1.8 and above. If your operating system is 16.04, then 1.8 is the supported version. 1.7 won't support in the AWS cloud. For Ubuntu 16.04, you need to install JDK 1.8. Whereas uh, for Ubuntu 14.04, it is recommended with JDK 1.7. Even though it supports 1.8, for 14.4, 1.7 supports, 16.4 in AWS, 1.7 don't have a support. Please make a note of this constraint. Okay, so here. It is up to the choice to decide uh, whether going for with uh, 14 1.7 combination or 16 1.8 combination. So assume that uh, with respect to your so everything is perfect, it will uh, land in your uh, operating system prompt. Okay, so with respect to this OS. Uh, any Linux with respect to the user has been concerned to have a user called root user who is the administrator. And you have a system user and you have a normal or end user. 
okay the root user is a administrator he is having the full privilege the system users are nothing but the demons running on behalf a normal or end user are the user who interact with the system like ours these are all the three types of users here certain things need to be done under the root user privilege if you logged in your login prompt itself will let you know if it is a hash it is a root user if it is a dollar it will be a normal user login okay so while login as a normal user if you want to do certain execution which a root user can execute you can issue a sudo command okay and before any command you can issue a sudo as a prefix or which is the sudo will give you a root user privilege for that execution alone so or not all the user can use this sudo privilege it should be mentioned under etc a file called sudo s under this file the user name need to be listed then only he can be given a permission to use sudo so the sudo gives you a temporary root user credential for executing okay these are all some of the thing that you need to aware of so here assume that at the time of installation of your vm okay with ubuntu as your operating system using your vmware workstation what we are going to vmware workstation yes it prompts you for a username it prompts you for a password the username that i have given here is hadoop and password that i yes here i am going to give is hadoop you to i request each and every one to follow the same set of process along with the same user credentials for the first time after that if you are uh, having a confidence you can make use of uh, any username or any credential that of you interest but for the first time you make use of the uh, username and password is hadu assume that uh, you after uh, creating a virtual machine and installed uh, uh, ubuntu you got landed in the normal user prompt your present working directory shows that you are under home slash hadu so this is the users home directory where all the files associated with the users will be stored here in the location okay users home directory each and every user in a linux will have his own home directory okay so if you have a given instead of hello the username as raman then if you type present or key directory it will show home slash raman this is the way by which a uh, uh, user work directory user home directory will be created under the name that you have assigned under uh, the user name while installation okay so it is assumed that you was under home slash hadoop step 1 first i am going to install java okay the first command so my present working directory is assumed to be home slash hadoop first i make a update sudo apt hyphen get update what this command will do so ubuntu is a open source we have this ubuntu repository okay this is my machine okay this is my laptop that i am going to configure so it will make a connection to the ubuntu repository and it will look for some patches it will look for some dependencies it will look for some patches it will look for the dependencies and it will download the needed thing on top our laptop the execution of following commands need a internet connection it's a user of following commands in your machine need a internet connection sudo apt get 
if we issue this command is here a request will be uh, proceeded to the ubuntu repository it will make a check and it will install the needed patches and dependency packages that it is missing in your laptop or desktop then after that you need to install java so you can check java space iphone version uh, under which uh, it will uh, result that java not installed so what you need to do you need to install java using the following command i am going to install the open jdk sudo apt iphone get install open jdk iphone 8 iphone jdk this is for jdk 1.8 if it is jdk 1.7 here you need to replace it with open jdk iphone 7 iphone jdk this is the okay so uh, if you do this update it took minimum 5 to 10 minutes to perform an update if it is your vm if it is your cloud instance it will be done within a minute Similarly, installation of Java 2, it took around 5 to 10 minutes. Here, once again, it will be completed within a minute. If you take uh, AWS Cloud Instance, this compilation, these are all the time taken to configure in VM using virtualization software or instance in cloud. Next, what you need, you install Java. Okay, open JD. So under user, under under var, under lib, a folder by name JVM is created here. This open Java has been installed. This is the default location where lib JVM Java will be installed by default. Please make a note. This is the default location of installation of java open java okay you can verify whether it is installed here <clears throat> after that you need to install sskh sudo apt iphone get install open sskh iphone server once again, it took uh, three to five minutes to install. Here to within a minute, it will be installed. Open SSK stands for secured cell. To make a communication between these two end systems in a secured manner, okay, so you need to configure this SSK. You can get more information on SSK from Google. SSK stands for secured cell which establish the tunnel based communication between these two end systems and as a result any hacker who try to hack the information that has been transmitted will be denied okay these are all the way by which you can configure an open ssh the next step after installing this uh, following So, sudo so open SSK server. Next, you need to perform a key generation SSK hyphen key gen. So, it will generate two keys under home, under Hadoop. You have a folder by name dot SSK under which it generates id underscore rsh dot pub, a public key and id underscore rsa a private key it will generate two keys one is a public key and another one is private key as of now you just keep this two keys is used to authenticate authentication purpose to authenticate you as a legitimate user the user had to need to be authenticated as a legitimate user for that we are going to make use of this key 
you simply ssk is key then you want to type enter 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 you no need to type anything if you type enter 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 then the output will be these two keys will be generated then you need to copy the key so here you need to issue a copy so copy under form under hadoop under dot ssk id underscore rsa dot pub the key need to be copied under a name authorized underscore key under the same location under form under hadoop under dot ssk authorized underscore keys so here if a key by name authorized underscore key is found under dot ssk that the user will be considered as a legitimate user and he will be given a permission to enter into any machine without asking password so that thing will be discussed in depth during our installation just a overview of what we need to do so after uh, configuring this you can make a check ssh local host and then without asking password it prompts your question for the first time need to uh, assign the authorized key and have a fingerprint yes you want to click yes and uh, here it will without asking password it will lag if everything is done properly the key generation and copying the key is perfect then it won't ask you a password okay so to verify everything is perfect this is the way by which you need to perform up to this what we did we performed the update we installed this java we installed the open ssh files we got generated the key and we have copied the key and we made a verification everything is perfect up to this do you have any questions to be answered no ram are you good yeah yes arun sanjay be good yeah okay the next step what you need to do i you want to download and configure hadoop okay so to make a check present org in directory was under home slash hadoop you need to download hadoop the command to download hadoop is wl get the hadoop url here we are going to download hadoop 1.2.1 the url 1.2.1 there you can get the url you can get the url by searching into google it will be under the apache dot org this is the site where it contains the following url okay i simply go and make a check you type download hadoop 1.2.1 for ubuntu it will take you to archive site archive dot archive.org click on here is the file that you need to download the file size of 61 mb yeah? hadoop python 1.2.1 okay dot dot gz the same file is a binary okay if you want to do some modification uh, you can get the binary file on top of it you can do any modification okay this is a file that you need a file of size 61 mb simply right click and it will give you a copy link address copy the link address okay and come back so you share what you need to do here in that so example you have the dollar from you issue the w get command and if you simply right click and paste the link address will be placed okay share if you enter then hadoop will be downloaded under the following under home under hadoop you have a folder by name hadoop iphone 1.2.1 dot star dot g is it it is a zip file tape archive uh, archive zip file 
this is will be downloaded then what you need to do so here you want to enter a task space hyphen xdf is the command to enter you need to enter hadoop hyphen 1.2.1 dot 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 g is it so it will now create a following folder hadoop under home hadoop we have a folder by name hadoop hyphen 1.2.1 okay so this is the thing and that will be created after you download the tar.gz file and using this wget you can download and using this tape archive x stands for extract b stands for verbose f stands for file the zip file is unzipped and you got a folder hadoop hyphen 1.2.1 under which you will be getting the following information you have a folder by name conf Ram, one question like uh, uh, Hadoop 1.2.1 is the latest version? No, Hadoop uh, currently we are using uh, Hadoop 2.9. Okay, so the current version currently uh, we have Hadoop 3 launched uh, somewhat uh, two months back. We will be discussing all the things Hadoop 1, Hadoop 2, and Hadoop 3. So okay. need to Contact. Simply, if you if you simply download Hadoop, automatically it will take you to the Apache Hadoop Okay, so here archive containing previous software. This is the thing that you need to download. The current version you can find. So here the current version is 3.1.0. You can click on to the mirror side. You can click any mirror here. And here you can find uh, the Hadoop stable versions. Okay, if you click on the stable, it will list you the stable. The current stable version is with respect to version 2, 2.9.1 tar.gz, which was released uh, on 19th of uh, fourth month. This is the latest uh, 2.x. And now here you have a Hadoop 3 that has been launched. Okay. So Hadoop 3 is launched on the month of 8, August month, 8-8-2018, whose size is 3. Okay, this is the current version that it is launched, but it yet to be implemented. So out of uh, 100 implementations that I have told, nearly 98-99% they use 1.2 and Hadoop 1.x and 2.x. Okay, so now you need to download and install Hadoop 1.x. And uh, then only you will uh, know what is the problem associated with one point x, how the problem has been resolved in two point x. Okay, so wget Hadoop URL, and then it will be downloaded. Okay, so under which you can find the following files under home Hadoop, you can find so person working directory, it will be under home, under Hadoop. So you have a Hadoop hyphen 1.2.1 under which you can find a folder by name Conf. The Conf folder contains a configuration files that we need. We need to populate these configuration files. So what are all those configuration files? Here we have the first Hadoop hyphen mrman.sh. Here you need to specify the Java home path where you have installed Java that need to be specified. Next, code hyphen site.xml file under which you need to specify the IP address of your name node. Name node's IP address need to be specified. Three, mapred hyphen site.xml. Mapred hyphen site.xml under which you need to specify job tracker's IP address. Number four, hdfs-site.xml. This is another file. Here you need to specify the number of block replicas. What, okay, and then how many replicas of block that you need to make, you need to specify. And you have a file by name masters. 
Okay, here you need to specify the secondary name nodes IP address. And finally, you have a file by name slaves. Here you need to list all data nodes IP address. So all these files will be under the following location. Home Hadoop corner, we can find all the six. Another file we have under home, under Hadoop. We have a file by name dot bash rc bash run control script. Here you want to specify the three parameters Java's home path. You need to specify Hadoop's home path and you need to specify the class path. These are all the three things that you need to specify. Okay, these are all the seven files, configuration files that you need to do the needed configuration. So I will show you all the configurations during the installation, okay, on our next class. So after performing all these things, next step, what you need to do, first time alone, you need to format. So everything after performing all the things, you type a source dot bash rc. If everything is perfect, what are all the configurations that you've done, if everything is perfect, it will land it in a dollar prompt. If not, it will show you the error. Okay, so source dot bash rc. It will reread and reroll the configuration files, and in case any problem, it will display there. Then move to the location. CD, home, Hadoop, Hadoop, iPhone 1.2.1. From there, you need to format, issue the following bin slash, Hadoop space, name node, space, iPhone format. You are creating a HDFS file system. Okay, so it will format the name node and you will get a message successfully formatted. You need to get this message successfully formatted. Then after that, everything is perfect. You need to issue start iPhone all dot sketch. It will start name node. It will start secondary name node. It will start job tracker. It will start data node and it will start task tracker. If you type JPS, JPS stands for Java process state. All the demands will be listed one by one. This is the way by which you need to configure a single node Hadoop cluster. Okay. It took a minimum to do all the opposite activity. It took minimum one hour, 15 minutes to one hour, 30 minutes. If it is uh, VMR, the same thing if it is cloud, it took minimum 15 to 20 minutes. We will do this uh, practical. Our next session, we have our session as discussed on Wednesday and Friday, uh, morning uh, 6 uh, 30 a.m. Is it 6 30 a.m. to 7 45 or uh, uh, up to 8 a.m. 1 hour 15 minutes or 1 hour 30 minutes during Wednesday? We install this. Up to this, what we have discussed, if you have any doubt, kindly let me know. Arun, Arun, Sanjay. So, uh, there's no doubt, but um, I just want to uh, tell you something. During Wednesday and Friday, when if it's class at 6.30, it'll be good that we'll start class at 6.30 itself because I'm in a different time zone and, I have, and I'll be at work. So I'll be joining the class when I'm at work. So it'll be good like, you know, if we start the class on time because I'm at work, so I won't be able to like, you know, take extra... Um, like hours for the classes and stuff so if you're starting at 6 30 that will be really good so let's not delay the class ram ram yeah. it's power and ram is it better if you can start a little early also is fine for us like uh, six also we are good so uh, sanjay six uh, it is not possible i go for jogging and be written at 6 15 is it okay for you guys 6 15 to 7 30. Uh, we can uh, uh, yeah that's, that will be good Ram. Uh, 
Sanjay? Yeah, uh, it's fine for me. I don't mind. Yeah, fine for me. Yeah. Then we have our session at 6.15. Okay? Wednesday, 6.15, you will receive the link on Tuesday evening. Okay. And okay. Um, yes, sir, can you send me the class, um, the course content, the curriculum okay. or whatever? Okay. Okay. So, so this is the course content that I had shown to you. I need to club with that stuff. I had already shown you. Is it on that uh, big data documents where I am holding all those things? Okay, uh, today I will send to you. It'll be good if you send it to us. All. Okay, I will share to you. I will look into that uh, where I am having. I will share to being uh, this uh, is a combination of uh, both uh, Spark and Hadoop. I got uh, prepared a separate thing. I want to check it where I hosted. Okay, I will send today. No issue. Thank you, sir. That'll be good. Thank you. So uh, we have our uh, lab session. What are all the things that has been discussed? We will uh, do it uh, practically on. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and after that, uh, uh, carefully observe what we are doing. And after that, I, you can do the practice uh, on your machine on Thursday, and you come back on Friday, our next session on Friday. If you couldn't make it, uh, we can make it as a, a debugging session. I can make a connection with each and every one machine. And what are all the problems that you faced, you let me know. I will let you know the solution. So that each and every one aware of what sort of issues that may arise and how to resolve those issues. Yes? Okay. No worries, sir. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Bye. Have a good day.